Everybody and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Katie with John Henry's and today I'm here to talk to you about tips and tricks for preparing the perfect beef tenderloin for your holiday gathering. Often referred to as the most tender cut of beef, the beef tenderloin is a portion of the popular porterhouse steak. But my personal favorite, the filet mignon, is cut from the beef tenderloin. There aren't any bone-in or boneless options with a beef tenderloin because it is boneless. But we do have options for size. If you are serving a larger group of people, we have the whole tenderloin, which is between three and a half and four and a half pounds. Maybe a little bit smaller group, a half beef tenderloin, which is one and a half to two and a half pounds. Or if maybe it's just a few of you, maybe you would just like the individual fillets that you can prepare how each person prefers. Being that the beef tenderloin has no marbling, it can dry out quickly, so it's very important that you use a digital thermometer when you're cooking it. Also, our butchers remove the silver skin from the beef tenderloin, so it's ready to cook when you receive it. As you can see, our butcher has neatly knotted and tied this beef tenderloin, so it keeps its shape. But I do want to let you know that if you purchase fillets, they will come vacuum packed, and they kind of look like little mini pancakes. But as soon as they are cooked, they poof right up and will be beautiful. Because there is little to no marbling with the beef tenderloin and no bone to contend with, the serving size can be smaller. If it is your only meat that you're serving at your gathering, I recommend a half a pound per person. But if you are going to be serving another meat, you could go down to a quarter pound per person. I know at my family gathering, I do make a ham and a beef tenderloin, and I do go for the half a pound per person because everybody's coming back for seconds. Our cows are grass fed. They spend their days out in our lush pasture. They do have a barn that they can go into if the weather gets bad or they want to, but usually they prefer to just spend their days outside in the rain, the sun, the snow, albeit whatever the weather is, they like to be outside. They are fed hay, silage, which is the fermented green corn stalk that is chopped up, and baleage, which is fermented hay, during the winter months when it's too cold and there is no grass to be found because it's buried under the snow. We don't use any antibiotics or hormones or anything like that, and no harsh chemicals on our pasture or our fields. Our animals live a healthy, active lifestyle, just like God designed them. With the beef tenderloin, there are so many methods of cooking that you can choose from. You could choose the oven, the grill, or my favorite is our pellet grill that kind of doubles as a smoker. It gives you that smoky flavor, um, but cooks kind of like a grill. Today, we're going to use the stove top for searing the beef tenderloin and then stick it in the oven for cooking. We have several recipes on our recipe corner that can be found on our website at www.johnhenrys.net slash recipe corner. Also, if you would like to purchase a beef tenderloin from our farm, you have the option to choose to add a recipe card and you'll be receiving one of these recipe cards with your meat. Talks all about the beef tenderloin choosing the correct size, and then simple cooking instructions. And we're actually going to be cooking it just like this recipe today. Now it's time to prepare the meat to cook. So for a beef tenderloin, simple, easy is best. Prepare your favorite seasonings that you like on a steak or a filet salt, pepper, garlic. I kind of have a blend that I prefer. 
And basically what we're going to do is we're going to liberally sprinkle the beef tenderloin with our seasoning blend. And then we are going to sear it in a pan of butter. Oh, butter, it's wonderful. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so I'm going to liberally sprinkle. As you can see, there's these delicious big chunks of salt. They add so much flavor to the beef. Make sure that you roll your beef tenderloin to get all the sides covered with the seasoning. All right, that looks like it's very well seasoned. Now we're gonna prep our pan with the butter for the searing of the beef tenderloin. Grab your favorite searing pan and some butter and go ahead and put it on medium to medium high heat. All right, we're ready to add the butter. Butter is my friend. So add several tablespoons. The butter is starting to sizzle, so we're going to get ready to start searing. Place the beef tenderloin into your pan when your butter is good and hot. And then we're going to let it sear on each side for just a few minutes. We're ready to flip. Oh yeah. Beautiful, nicely seared side. Now that our beef tenderloin has been seared, it's ready to go into the oven. It's really easy to choose a pan to cook the beef tenderloin in because it doesn't need a special cover or anything. So a glass pan or this metal pan here that I have works really well. So let's preheat the oven to 475 degrees. And we're ready to transfer the beef tenderloin into our pan. I like to transfer all the drippings as well because this is just seared in butter. And if you're wanting to make a gravy, these drippings are delicious. Now that that's done, we're gonna add a little bit more butter to the top. I think it was Julia Childs who said, you can never have enough butter. And I agree. There we go. All right, now it's ready to put into the oven. Now don't forget to use a digital thermometer to get the correct doneness for your beef tenderloin. There is a chart on our recipe card or can be found on our website as well. If you prefer medium rare, medium, medium well, I usually cook mine to internal temperature of 145 degrees. Cooking it to the internal temperature of 140 degrees takes it about 35 minutes. Once that's done, I take it out, cover it, and let it rest for about 10 minutes, then serve. Now that your beef tenderloin is done cooking, you're ready to slice and serve it for your family gathering. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for supporting our farm.